What is up, everybody? We got another episode of The Strange Road coming right at you. I'm your host, Mikey. And of course, as always, riding shotgun, Bub, the bro host. Bub, how you doing, bud? What's happening? Feeling good? Great. Feeling great. great. Ready for another mind-blowing conversation on the uh, subject of ancient civilizations in America? You know how I know I'm ready? I had pizza with macaroni and ribs on it today. (laughs) Yeah, you did. I'm ready to go. Hey, shout out to Mikey's Late Night Slice. They crush it. Really good. Mac Um, rib Right down the road from the office. Great stuff. Um, You know, uh, we're super, super stoked for this episode um, coming up here tonight. But first... A uh, little bit of uh, shout outs to all the social media pages yeah. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, at the Strange Road. Um, we've got the Facebook group, Strange Road Hitchhikers. And also, if you guys please keep sharing, keep following, keep yeah. rating. Yeah. Um, you guys are bringing it. We appreciate all the love, all the support. And, uh, you know, like, subscribe, share, tell your friends. Um, write those five star ratings really, really helps the show. And as always, we like to keep these, uh, ad free for all of our premieres, That's all right. of our live streams. And so a great way to support the show is the super stickers and super chats. Yep. And we appreciate the hell out of all you guys. Uh, but I think we should hop right in. Yep. We got a lot of things cooking. We just want to keep the gas on to finish the meal. Yeah, man, let's do it. Let's introduce our guest for tonight. Help us welcome to the show, explorer, researcher, and the mind behind Mysterious Mountains, Josh Smart, everybody. Josh, what is up, man? Welcome to the strange road, buddy. Thank you. How you doing tonight? I'm doing great. You? Awesome. Real good, man. We're very, very stoked to have you on. And, uh, you know, I think uh, give us a little bit of background about yourself and how you got into researching uh, stone structures, stone chambers in New England. Um, You know, we found out out about you through uh, Mike Luoma. That's right. And you were hanging out in our YouTube chat during his episode. We kind of kept in contact and and chatting a little bit in Instagram. So it was great to finally get you on the show. Um, and, uh, yeah, just give us a little bit of background and, and how you got to into, you know, starting the YouTube channel and everything. All right. Well, thanks. Um, kind of got into researching, um, kind of starting like 2012 when I was working in Woodstock, I was noticing like weird stonework. Uh, there was one like big stone hut that was called, the guy I work with said the Vikings built it which I later found out was called Calendar 2, which is one of the most famous stone stone chambers in the area. Um, But I didn't come back to that until uh, I went out. It all kind of started in 2019. I went to Vegas and went to the Grand Canyon and saw ancient stonework out there from the natives. Um, They're like cellar holes almost. They had like, um, how would you describe it? They had, they entered in through the top and then went through these chambers pretty much. I saw that and I was like, that kind of looks like what I saw in Woodstock. Then I started reading America Before from Graham Hancock and learned about there's a lot more chambers in the area. Then I kind of dove into finding the chambers and I found out in the county I live in, there's 32. And while I was trying to research, trying to find those, I did find calendar two. I went back to it, checked it out, and realized I'm like, this stonework doesn't make any sense because hmm. the slabs of the roof alone are tons. They're huge. Hmm. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, hey, and it's just so out of place. Like, I've never seen anything quite like it before. Then it just kind of snowballed from there because I started asking people and trying to find answers. And as I started just asking questions and looking around, I was finding that people were already researching this stuff and I was sharing what I was finding and people were giving me, helping me saying this, this like the stone walls in the area around some of the stonework, like the stone chambers and stuff like that. And people were like, those are native walls. I'm like, what? <laughs> Cause I never heard of any of this that I learned about Nira that I found, found Mike's um, Facebook group and started sharing stuff on there. And there's a lot of researchers on Facebook that were helping me and guiding me and giving me resources and where to look and what to look for. And then just like, like I said, just snowball because I'm in an area that's kind of a cluster. 
and they're just it's stonework everywhere. And I told myself, I, I started using LIDAR maps. And I told myself, if I, if I think it's colonial, I'm going to stop looking. But every time I go out, I'm like, this isn't colonial. There's no way this is colonial stonework. And I'm still, this is 2020 when I started. And I'm still finding new stuff today. Wow. I was going to ask, how yeah. do you, how do you determine if it is colonial or, or not? What, what it, I guess is that, I don't know if that's just a very ignorant question on my part, probably so, but no, I don't what, think what so. are the, how are you going about that? Let's or? just set the stage real quick sure. because we've covered, we, we've had Dennis Stone on, we've had Mike Luoma <laughs> right. and we've had some very fiery comments in our YouTube we comments have. about have. these stone walls that you know, Mike and, uh, and Josh and all these guys are researching it. People get very fired up yeah. about the idea of them mm-hmm. not being colonial, you know? So I don't understand why, uh, you know, it's the rock piles. They're clearing fields. They're so stacking what? So these what? boulders. You, you don't think, oh, I'm sorry, this is going to digress a little bit. What, what the, there's no possibility or way that somebody other than just colonial people did this. I'm just saying, I'm, I'm setting the stage for, uh, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I'm just saying, so I'm, I'm being just the devil's advocate the dev- on the other side of like, what? I agree with you. I'm open to all of it. There's a lot Josh, of evidence. That what, what is back to Justin's yeah. question now <laughs> that we, it's a very controversial subject. Um, but what makes you think versus colonial versus this is much more ancient, the earmarks? Um, the location of them, usually they're going up mountainsides that are rocky. They're around natural springs. Uh, they're running in and out of water. Uh, they're running through bogs. It's just the location of them. It's not farm field. Um, you might find barbed wire once in a while in these walls, but a lot of them are shaped like a snake. They end at a large um, boulder, snake head shaped boulder. And a lot of them, again, they're they're around springs. They're up going mountainsides. And then when I started looking at the deed records, I did not find any. What uh, one of the first places I started looking, I dove right into like the history of the place. I went to the town hall and looked up all the deed records, and there was no mention of any any development on the land whatsoever. And that that kind of, it, but it has miles of stone walls on it, and a stone circle. Um, it just didn't make any sense for colonial use when there's no record of it whatsoever. And the location of it was on a rocky mountainside, next to a river, and all the stonework goes right down to the river. And that river is the Black River, which has an ancient road on it that has been used for the last 12,000 years. And there's um, a site on that road that has been dated back to the Paleo American time. Hmm. So I've just been kind of piecing things together, looking at land history, going to town halls, looking at records, and also the stonework. A lot of it's very low, meaning if you had livestock, they can just jump it. So hmm. it doesn't really keep anything in. And then you find, um, I have examples of that I'll show later. Um, these stone piles that are well built, huge, and usually in large clusters. Like there's one site in New Hampshire I've been going to the last two years, and I've counted 12 large stone piles so far. And on the LIDAR map, there's a lot more, but there's just so much, and their landscape's kind of rough to walk through. So mm-hmm. I'm still chipping away at that one. And where are the resources for the LIDAR surveys? Who's doing those? Uh, State Vermont has their own public access LIDAR map. Wow. I kind of found that. Um, I was I was just hearing about down in the Central America, how they're using LIDAR to find all the ancient ruins down there. Yep. I'm like, huh, I wonder if there's one up here because I was trying to find the um, stone chambers. And... I I just found the map. I just typed in Vermont LiDAR map, popped right up, and started using that and finding stuff on the map. And you can um, pinpoint where the location is on the GPS. So I would just pinpoint a location, go check it out. I'm like, okay, that's what that looks like on the LiDAR map. I just kind of taught myself what to look for and what appears on the LiDAR map, how it appears on the LiDAR map. I say in New Hampshire, had, New Hampshire has their own LiDAR map. It's called the New Hampshire Stonewall Mapper. And it just shows all the stone walls in the state. People can just go in, find the stone walls, and mark them. So you don't really have to look for them. They're just all there in uh, in pink. That's interesting. 
Wow. So then yeah. you you go you get on the ground with a GPS device, track down where that's at. And once you once you come across one of these sites, do you instantly get the sense that there is something about this that, like you said, it's a head scratcher. They're up on these cliffs because Mike talks about that too. Well, they're up on these cliffs, which is basically a dried seabed where a different water line would have been following that water line around. Right. And you're you're doing something yeah. similar, if I if I remember right. Yeah, we're, Mike and I are kind of researching the same way, and um. Yeah, the stonework just, it's on bedrock. A lot of it's on bedrock. It's not in fields. It's not in landscape that would be good for farming. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> well, and my, my thought, too, on this is I'm, like, thinking of, like, okay, well, if, it, if they're attributing it to colonial work, it doesn't seem to me that we would have come over here and started, like, establishing, like, you know, farms and like civilization for when we were coming here and then we're like oh we're just going to randomly go up the side of this hill to put up this you know <laughs> non useful yeah. f- like stone wall fence we just right. thought we'd spruce up the the middle of nowhere <laughs> yeah. you know like literally we're already in the middle of nowhere we're going to go to more of the middle of nowhere and put something out there for nothing yeah. or at least that's what it well, seems like or lot- it would have been a wasted effort maybe i don't know well, the law that when I started looking into this, the common knowledge of the stonework is it was for sheep walls. And I talked to a town historian, and she told me that the sheep were a special breed with short, stubby legs that couldn't jump the walls. But yet they were going on terrain that was steep and rocky. I'm like, it doesn't add up. No, um, it doesn't make they sense. They would yeah. jump on the wall and just jump right over. I mean, sheep and goats, yeah. they can climb anything. They can climb a lot. Right, but if their legs were also too tiny to even, like, make it over these walls, he's saying they wouldn't be able to make it up and around these mountains and and hillsides because that's enough terrain that Mm -hmm. they would need longer legs. Like, you don't see a lot of stubby-legged goats, you know. They got got long, Mm gangly. It doesn't make sense, but they're nimble, Mm -hmm. right? Mm Mm-hmm. And also the construction style. I... You know what, like, a stone, a stone stone wall looks like. It's nice and even. It's built well. The stonework I was finding was kind of looks more organic. It kind of flows with the landscape. It's just a different style, all uh, completely. It just doesn't fit the narrative for a colonial construction. Right. Well, more more aesthetic than actual function. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And also in like this area, uh, sailors didn't come up here until 1750, until after the French and Indian War ended, because this was kind of Native American territory and the French were trading with them and the English came up and took over in the 1750s. And that's when people started coming up. And then the sheep boom happened in the 1800s and it lasted until about 1840. And after that, it just plummeted like really quickly. It just ended. And the, in New England alone, there's 200, 240,000 miles of stone wall enough to go around the earth 10 times. And they say that all that was built in 40 years. And you what? see these walls. What? And it's just, yeah. Wow. See, I'd never that heard was a survey that done. Jeez. Yeah. That was a survey done in the 1800s. Um, and I don't, I think there's probably more stonework than that. Cause mm-hmm. I find stonework going up and over mountains. I'm pretty sure they didn't put into the tally. Right. But then you see how much labor that would take to do to create all this. Plus, you got the cairns, you got the uh, stone mounds, the chambers. It's just the amount of stonework here doesn't make sense in such a small time frame. Right. It's really interesting that they discount the New England stone structures, but here in Ohio, seven Hopewell sites just got World Heritage site. Yeah, uh, just got I World saw that. World Heritage. So. What makes New England, why do people push back and say, oh, well, they couldn't be working with stonework? Uh, Some of the mounds in Indiana have massive megalithic stone structures inside of them, and they agree. I don't get it. They they look like the stone chambers. In New England, they just have dirt, clay, sand, layers over top to create, you know, the the burial mound. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the way those roofs are, like you said earlier— that what that's what blew my mind with with some of Mike's photos of that where he had his experience in the chamber was yeah 
and just how those root, those huge stones and how they're perfectly laid. And, and, and what they always said, they were like potato sellers and root sellers. Yeah. And stuff like it's like I just you made a very abstract-looking root seller there then. <laughs> that you didn't just make so just a rectangular-looking plain root seller. You didn't yeah. – it, again, it just looks way too engineered for something else. What do you say to the, de the detractors, Josh, people that – you know, obviously, I just don't think many of those people have visited these places to – Right. Like you said – you got to give a perspective of where these are located. Well, I like to also like share like Native American history. Um, there's a great book, 1491. Mm. And it in that in that book, it's all about how what was going on before Columbus. And one of the things was when the pilgrims came over and landed, they landed during a time where the Native Americans in the Northeast were going through pretty much a plague pretty much 95 up to 95 percent of the population died that's when the pilgrims landed and they just moved in to a abandoned village and that's the only way they really survived too they were just uh, going around the village and collecting what they needed to survive and the first 50 villages in new england were on vacant native american villages so it just and that kind of got brushed away too because they, they did the colonialism it wants to erase native american history mm -hmm. and it, it it has done it did a really good job of that here in vermont um in the 80s it was believed that no native americans lived in vermont they just used that as hunting ground they oh, never settled Lord. down here they just they just came through and that's it no one there's no permanent people living here and they thought that for up to the 80s, then in um, 1920s, they did eugenics on the Native Americans mm. of the state, which is not a good thing. They just actually apologized for that. Wow. And no tribe was recognized in the state until 2012. Are you serious? New Hampshire, wow. Yeah, wow. New Hampshire still doesn't wow. recognize any tribes. So that's the, well, a lot of the issue is the colonialism they don't recognize native american history or their impact on the land yeah, that's that's super wild to me that's still like shocking like i don't i don't understand i re i do and i don't like i fully understand what's going on but i can't understand that we're at this modern age in time and that's what's going on because again it's just holding up getting to the answers it's just holding up getting to reality and i'm tired of being held back from reality yeah, in Ohio, they don't deny any of that stuff, that the mounds are ancient and, you know, they're the relatives of the ancient Native American right. people. Right. But we just don't learn about it in school. No. We just they don't, don't tell never, you about it. No. You got to go I, find it later I on discovered all this in 2012. I had been to Serpent Mountain, Shrum Mountain, and some mounds, but I thought it was kind of like this one-off weird things. I right. didn't realize that there were at one time over 10,000 yeah. of these ancient sites and kind of... Yeah, all came to a head in 2013. So it's really recent for me to have even, you know, even Stone Chambers, I think I learned about in 2014. Oh, yeah. I'm still learning about so much stuff. Yeah, same here. It's so much history. You have to, like, search for it yourself to learn what was here. That's right. But I think that's what starts to really irritate people and not me so much because... I think that's just part of getting to the bottom of things, right? Is like still pulling on threads and you got to keep pulling out those little rods until all the marbles fall like the game of Kerplunk. Like we're still not there. Like we're pulling on them. But I think a lot of people, and again, this is you take it on a nice little spectrum, if you will, of like there, there are people that say, hey, history's already written. That's good. And there are other people that go, okay, fine. Yeah, they probably got this wrong. We can amend that. But like I think what we're saying and what you're doing and with your research and others are is we're finding out it doesn't even help if they back it up 5,000 years or 10,000 years sometimes or whatever, you know, we keep, it's jumping so dramatically anymore that like, I think people are just like, well, I don't even want to touch it. And like, they, they just get fed up with it because they're so frustrated because like, they feel like we feel, we really don't know what the actual timeline and history and things people get attacked. are. People get attacked. Yeah. You're not even allowed to ask her question. It's like, no, but we've been wrong before on things. Maybe we could have been wrong, you know, again, like, it's it's a refinement process, and it's okay if we review our own history mm -hmm. every so often and go, hey, is this accurate? 
we know it's been uh, maybe tinted or, or tainted before, right? Or slanted or however you want to say. And, and it, like Norm MacDonald joked about, like, thank God all the good guys always won all the wars. Yeah. You know, yeah. they wrote all the history for it. Yep. So, Josh, how what yeah. was your eureka moment where you just said, holy cow? Because I know mine. I know the exact moment that happened for me when I became obsessed with ancient history here in Ohio in the Midwest. Was there some site that you visited? Was it, you know, the Upton Stone Chamber or one of these places where you thought, wow, this is something I need to be around? Um, I guess it was when I visited Calendar 2. I was amazed by it, but it didn't really click until later. Uh, this is during COVID. I had I was not working because COVID. Right. So I was just out, I was out fishing. I'm looking at the stonework, not stonework. I'm looking at the stones along this river, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, that looks just like the stone in the chamber, and this is very far away. Then I thought about other ancient civilizations that they would store stone far away and move it. Then I realized there's 32 chambers in the state now in, in the County. What? Um, yeah, there's 32 in, in this County alone. I've only, I think I've found, I found two. I think I might've found three and one's kind of buried and collapsed. Well, actually four, four, um, two possible, two for sure. Uh, what was I saying? Sorry. <laughs> No, oh, oh. yeah, just about all the the places that you're coming across and and putting the pieces together to get to the point where, yeah. you know, you really started opening your eyes to this possibility of whatever it is you're you're looking at. Mm -hmm. Where I was fishing is on the um on next to this river called the Black River, and next to that, I've been driving that for almost ten years now, and it's lined with stone like stone walls. And I've never understand, understood why there's stone walls there because it's a cliff and it comes to the road and the road is right next to the river. I was trying to understand, like, why is there so much stonework here? It doesn't make any sense. Then I just started questioning and started looking and that's when the ball started rolling because then that's the place I checked for the deed, uh, the deed history and realized there was nothing there. That's interesting. I've never heard anybody talk about that. I mean, that to me gives all of this so much validity because I don't think a lot of people have looked into that aspect. Mm -mm. Well, number one, were there colonial people even living here? You're saying this is a rock pile from a field or some kind of root cellar. Is there anybody that ever had property? Genius, Josh. I right. mean, bravo, dude. That's really, really smart. I mean, dude's got receipts. Right. Now, there could have been homesteaders maybe, right? Could have they just snuck off and like lived out there and maybe built a little plot of land That's or something. So but effort. again, it's just... <laughs> There's so much. He's saying again, it, it wraps around the world. Any reason that it could have happened. Whatever. I get it. I, I'm just saying. Yeah. I'm trying to think of it from the point of view that somebody doesn't, you know, doesn't take your word for it or something. They, they, they have to find their own answer for it. And I'm trying to yeah. think like that and I can't... I don't think if I was well, I a, 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 sorry, uh, go ahead. Oh, that wasn't my idea. Um, there's a guy that runs another group, um, Nessie, Matt Adams. He's been doing this for a while, and he's the one that said, look into the land history, look okay. for alignments, stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, I'll st start doing that. Also, I had a Vermont history class in college, and my professor was a historian, and he taught us how he does his research. So I kind of took his tips, too. That's so cool. Nice. Nice work, So man. cool. Yeah, we've heard, definitely heard of Matt Adams. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, he's popped in the Friends of the Serpent Mountain Facebook group, I know. And mm. uh, I think I was chatting with him a little bit last year, talking to him before we rebooted the show. Um, he's got some really cool stuff, too. Nice. Um, yeah, he does. Yeah, man. That's So what's your take as far as, um, you know, the obviously – is there any sort of date or has anybody looked at trying to date these places or the chambers or is anybody getting close to some kind of a conclusion of who built these? Well, NERA with the uh, University of Washington, they've been doing OLA cell dating on the law sites and calendar two, they actually dated to 900 AD with the OLA cell uh, dating. Then they've been there's a site in Pennsylvania that's dated to 
20, uh, 2,500 years ago. And they're just, they're finding more and more these constructions are built pre-European contact. Wow. That's there wild. You go. So, and it's, I've been using that information when people say it's colonial. I'm like, well, here's some research paper done by professors and professionals. And this is what the dates are coming out as. Wow, man. Yeah, that's just, uh, I'm really, really interested in the more research that people are doing and, and getting people on the ground that are, that can bring validity to it in terms of like, you know, a, a scholar yeah. that's putting, sounds like they're kind of putting their neck out there a little bit too. It's a little yeah. bit of a taboo and, for a, a scholar to write that paper. Good for them. I think it's going to start happening more and more. Yeah. Yeah. I listen to a lot of archaeology podcasts. I read a lot of archaeology papers and people are starting to be more accepting of Native Americans that have been on in the continent of North America a lot longer than people originally thought. Clovis oh, first is yeah. gone pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That Clovis has completely fallen apart. I mean, just yeah. alone, the stuff that they found out in Florida recently, um, what they oh. found on the California coast, um, you know, the mammoth. Um, bones and mm -hmm. things like that near Vero Beach and oh, when they were digging up the road in San Diego and they mm -hmm. found the like woolly mammoth right. tusk with like the markings the marking, on it that yeah. like you know look like etchings from a tool like oh yeah, there's just... time and there's a good cool. book, um, Paleo Indigenous uh, Paleolithic. That's all about sites that were kind of thrown out 30 years ago because they didn't fit the narrative. Mm -hmm. mm. Bingo. And there's, and that book pushes it back to that man, the site, uh, I forget the name of it, but they had it back to like 127,000 years ago. Sure. Wow. And, um, I have no doubt. also, um, there's a group, um, like a federation of tribes, United Southern Eastern tribes. They made a resolution in 2007 asking for these sites to be recognized and that most people misidentify them as farm fields or homesteads and they list off what what's in these works and what they could be and it just shows that native americans have always known they're here they just their voices aren't heard mm -hmm. sure yeah i mean if they were weren't even recognized as a tribe and right how can you have a voice to speak up to Maybe say, this is our heritage. This is our ancient past. Well, this is many tribes. <laughs> yeah. Right. Sure. Sure. And I'm sure that's yeah. meant for a good reason. Like I'm sure it has to do with land and ownership and all kinds of things that people, again, that's what, that's one of the biggest problems with history is, and again, they, nobody wants to go, well, actually you were here first or that, you know, that's the whole thing. Like who was here first? And, is that way? Is anybody going to ever really know who out of all of the human species was here first or what civilization? Like, mm -hmm. what does that mean then? Okay, if we actually figure out, you know, where we came from, where the cradle of life was, whether it's in Africa or whatever country or continent, what does that matter? What are you going to do? Do you get to own the world and win the world then? Yeah. Like, that's I, how I don't works. get it. All I want to know is what's actually happening. I'm not trying to own it. Right. But that is the problem, I think, with a lot of this. And, you get into where if, if we start going, hey, again, in, in, in the U.S., if, if so-and-so is here first, well, we might owe them something now. And that's where we, we don't want to go, hey, we sorry we took all your land. Mm -hmm. We just don't want to make up. We just don't want to play nice. You have to admit a lot of wrong, oh, a lot of wrongdoings. Yeah. Uh, Josh, I would love to hop yeah. in some of these images you put together for Absolutely. us. Um, are you going around sure. and speaking about this at any events, or are you thinking about taking that step to, to, to put together a presentation? Um, no, no, I haven't really spoken anywhere. Um, I, cool. When I first got into this, I was, I was, like I said, I was doing the deed records and looking mm -hmm. up history and find alignments, and I was saying that to archaeologists in the area, and they're like, they would just say it's colonial. I'm like, oh, well, you want to come take a look? And they're like, no. Wow. It's, <laughs> it's, wow. I kind of dude. gave up on that. Yeah. Because, well, that's surprising. It's like, no, not really. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. 
It's no. just, it's just, that's the school you're going to. If you don't come out with that idea, you're not going to be a local archaeologist. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I see what you're saying. It, <laughs> kind of man. I just kind of give up because, yeah. It was, it was just kind of pointless out after, after a while. It's like, well, no one's going to listen. It's here. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it, I never understood how you can say something is what it is without ever looking at it. Bingo. Well, that's probably a good Man. answer to your question of whether or not they really care what they're like they said. How many people have traveled up it? into these cliffs and actually looked at these places? You look at a photo. No, that's throw it out. That's not. But get on the ground. Go out there. Check it out. Then make it make up your mind. And you know. Is there anything else we need to know about the, the just this entire story or this entire anything that you really really want us to know before we can hop into these images is there just anything recent that you found or anything that you want to share with us that maybe we've we've missed so far because this has been awesome um nothing i know of stuff will come up in the slides too perfect great cool. well yeah i think we should hop right into this already i mean what we're seeing here and we'll let josh kind of awesome guide us through these all right all right. Um, this is one of the first places I started looking around. I just started finding old dirt roads that had like old county road name, like an old country road. Uh, because usually those are the oldest roads in the area. And this is what I was finding. This is right next to a road and the stone wall was lining all this bedrock and boulders and just more rock. And that's why I said it didn't make sense for farmland because what can grow there? What kind of animal could thrive there? Right. Then it's just, it's very rough terrain. Then you see stuff like this, the stonework goes right into the boulders itself. It doesn't really enclose anything because this one right here, uh, let me go back real quick. This wall starts at that boulder and continues to the right this way, and that's what's enclosing is this area, which didn't make much sense to me. I'm like, why, why would they do that? Hmm. And it's, yeah. And then it just incorporates the bedrock and boulders. Right. And you can see it has kind of like that more organic motion to it, to it right there. Right, right. It's not, it's not fighting the landscape. It's not being stacked neatly like a colonial person right. would create a stone wall. It just flows along the landscape. That and is, and you see stuff wild. like this too. That's cool. I've quartz. never seen one like that That's before. Then this stuff too, like kind of the triangle right there. Mm -hmm. See that shape everywhere. That could be a representation of a snake head. Sure. Because serpents are everywhere. Yeah, and, it's an interesting wall. Wow. And then right here as well. It, they're they're not really. Sometimes there's. They're straight. Sometimes they're curvy like this, like a serpent going across the landscape. So it curves to that yeah, bedrock and flows right. down it. But Colonials did this because they were trying to, again, up the curb appeal of their local hillside when they were going to sell their non-deeded property to the next <laughs> non-deeded yeah. property owner. I'm just trying to get the facts here straight. <laughs> I, I think yeah. I'm on top of it. Uh, yeah, I love it. Why I, would they do that? I find this to be a lot of. I would That's probably do this because I That's love to cool. do things like this. But I understand it then from that perspective more than the colonial perspective. I would say from the Native American perspective, or that aspect makes more sense to me of working with the land, using it to almost tell a story or invoke a spirit or a, a entity if you will what do right? you what do you think these are ceremonial do you think they are like when you say how long they're stretching for what would be the purpose of that i know some of them are serpents and some of them are chambers and obviously there's alignments and stuff but these walls and it just uh, do you have any theory um that could be fire breaks because um this whole area, there's a great book, The First Frontier. It talks about how Native Americans engineered the landscape to work for them. Wow. And they did one thing they did was big fires. There's actual report in the Hudson Bay 
Dutch sailors in the middle um, of the Hudson Bay saying that both sides of the, the, the bay were just ablaze because they would burn all the underbrush, all the leaves. That way they could forage easily. They could wow. hunt easily. The forests were pretty much, if you've ever been skiing, like a gladed trail, big yeah. trees spread apart so you can fly right through it. Oh, yeah. Same idea. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And wow. So they could burn one side one season, then the other side another season. Sure. And then they would be able to have a clear path to travel. I think you just blew yeah. my mind. Yeah. I mean, that makes Whoa. a lot of sense now of why there's so much of it. I think for me to wrap my head around this, that was maybe one of the biggest keys that I've ever learned about these stone walls. It really just never made sense. I mean, just look at but all the look at all the engineering that has been done in the ancient world. Like even like one of the best examples I would say that this like close to this in my mind or where my analogy would go is Machu Picchu and like all the engineering done underneath the ground of yeah, the soil like and things like that to where you found out stuff right too. but I'm just saying knowing how to use the land mm -hmm. and like use it to you're making a fire break and you're engineering this way to clear and cultivate and propagate and hunt and ultimately like like, like they're, they're they're turning over the horticulture of the land and stuff like that right like they're tending to giant swaths of forest with these walls yeah cool then that's one thing colonial people came over and they saw how the indigenous people were using the landscape and it wasn't the correct way because they were working with it they weren't owning it which is the catholic way is to dominate the land and native, native american view was it, you are part of the land right so that's so, one reason why they just took over is because they said they weren't using it correctly so therefore they don't have rights to it that's so crazy. I believe you, it but that's just so crazy to me. I totally believe you. Hello. It makes sense. Look at wow. that. Dry laid stone. Wow. This, it, this I think it's a little footbridge, maybe. It's like a little um, way for water to flow through right there. That's cool. Wow. Look at that. I don't know what's going on. Hang on one second. No worries. And that's the inside of it. It's pretty wide. It's probably about 10 feet wide. Hmm. And this little, little channel goes all the nice. way through it. That's really cool. And this is all in the same one in a little area. Sorry, I think I'm having some difficulty there. No worries. And there we go. And this one, this is the only stonework. That little section right there. Hmm. You see it? Yeah. Yeah. It kind of looks like an eye. Hmm. It's a little tough to see on here from what we're looking at. Of I can't get yeah. it close enough, but uh, I'm going to have to look at it later. Yeah, it's a giant bedrock right there. Then some boulders right here. In between it, it's just this little tiny patch of stonework i'm not sure what it is because this land's posted i didn't walk up to it but i saw it and i'm like i'm like why would anyone even take the time to make that they make right. sense to me at the time yeah now this is a different area and one of the things people always say is all the trees were cut down and there's no old growth left in the state because the whole state was deforested therefore they had to use the stones to create the stone uh, to create the sheep, uh, sheep pens, but the state of Vermont even said in 1840, which was the height of the sheep boom, there was 1,200 law um, sawmills in the state. That kind of means there was a lot of a lot of available timber at the time when the sheep boom was at the highest. So they definitely had plenty of lumber to use. And as you see right here, you have two giant old dead trees right next to the wall. Right. And this one, this is a this is a giant dead tree. I have no idea how old this thing is, but it's been dead for a very long time. And the base of this, as you can see, is probably five feet. Is a giant old dead maple. Interesting. So there is there is old growth here. You find it once in a while, but usually it's dead. Right. And it's on top and, of the wall. Yeah. Well, that one is not. 
the other two are. Hmm. Okay. They're growing right out of it. And this is the connection with streams and water and bedrock, which I have found out the reason why that was constructed in that manner was the connection of the underworld, uh, water, bedrock, that's the home of the great horned serpent. And they would create these stoneworks to connect to, to connect to the other world, to our world and to the sky world by making alignments to solar events or mm -hmm. lunar events. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's Ross Hamilton's whole theory about serpent mound is the connection of father sky and mother earth and mm. the serpent's the one that travels between both worlds. Got yeah. You. And actually I went to a talk recently about some petroglyphs uh, about 20 miles down the Connecticut river. They're well known. They're recognized as Abenaki work. The local chief uh, was speaking about it and saying that there's a whirlpool right in front of this, um, the petroglyphs. And that's the serpent tail swimming in the water. Mm. And a diver dove down into that whirlpool. And she said it was just filled with quartz as offerings to mm. the serpent. Wow. Wow. Incredible. That's cool. This, this is a stone chamber at the winter solstice sunrise. You can see right here, there's kind of a, like a horn right there. Yeah. If that if there's a tree behind me, if it wasn't a tree there, that would be one solid light. And this thing comes right down perfectly along where the roof and the wall meet. The sun doesn't hit the roof at all. It just goes down perfectly right down. Hmm. Then it makes this little shape, which is made by this over here, hmm. which was, you can see, it's kind of propped up. Wow, that is wild. And it was kind of crazy. I was there early. I waited a while for the sun to, like, to peek over because this is kind of in a like a stone cellar hole. It was there was a house on top of this, but uh, this was looked at in the 80s or 70s. And someone, whoever did the report back then, thinks it was repurposed as a as a basement. And I talked to someone that was walking by one day. I'm like, was there ever a house here? She goes, yeah, it fell apart about 40 years ago. I'm like, okay. But she even said her, herself, she goes, I don't think that was part of the house, though. I think they built on top of it. Okay. And this this is the outside of the wall. I'm standing in the chamber now looking outside, and that's the sunrise coming in. Wow. That is pretty phenomenal. Yeah. And I think the this is just my guess here, but I think this is a reputation of the great horned serpent with that horn right there. Mm -hmm. This is, int you it reminds it. me of uh, when we had Heather Arnold on, she's doing research in Bermuda, um, Aruba, uh, sorry, Aruba. And they have these big coral giant monoliths where they have holes kind of carved in certain sections where on the equinoxes and solstices, the, the sun will shine onto another stone that's a little bit further away. And basically, yeah. it's it's a calendar system of sorts, but they're finding them all over Aruba. Yeah. And similar stuff I've seen in Chaco Canyon where they're using rocks to, to do light play. Um, you know, in New Mexico, similar thing with the winter solstice using Fajada Butte as a way to essentially create a dagger of light that you know, aligns to the equinox and solstice. So it's a common thread with these kind of megalithic structures and chambers. Um, but I mean, it is beautiful. Yeah. And this is way up on an old mountainside, like well, an old road on a mountainside and there's stonework everywhere in this area. Now, is this one that's kind of accepted in or is this something that you you came across and found this one mm -hmm. um it's known uh there's a professor he's retired now he wrote the book stone prayers i sent him a big list of all the sites that i found and he told me which ones were already recognized and this was one of them cool it's known, but it's not really recognized. Yeah, I guess uh, within you, the circle of Nira and, and the researcher, I guess 
nobody in the academia really is accepting it. Um, oh, right. But I mean, just the sheer volume blows my mind with these chambers and, and those colonials were busy. They had a lot of inspiration to build <laughs> yeah. these for no reason. I mean, it just never ends. What do you think? I mean, no. yeah. Other than this being a marker uh, for the for the rise of that, maybe as you know, a celestial movement. Like, what do you think this was used for? Something to store anything in, or like outside no. of just viewing that that event happen, or you know, it's ceremonial, right? Um, it's pretty wet inside there, like all the time. You can see it's kind of muddy. Um, and inside of it, I tried to take photos of it. The top of the top of the um, of the chamber mm -hmm. has crystallization like inside of a cave oh so i, I tried to take a photo of it but it doesn't really come up that well yeah so it it just seems ancient you walk in you're and it saying, just feels like a, yeah but you're saying yeah. the water's dripping from the ceiling down making stalactites yeah okay wow it has a lot of crystallization yeah had to be there for a while for that to happen that's really interesting yeah. mm-hmm Again. Yeah, I've been in a lot of caves, and it feels like a cave. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Ah, uh, the original man cave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, go to a different site. Absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Great. This is one, one of the other first places I was looking at, because I started realizing there's a lot of still work in this one little area. Yeah. And... Uh, this is another place. This is state land. So I contacted the state. They gave me the deed records from the 1940s on. Uh, there was just one small plot of a farm that they purchased. The rest of it was our state land. And whereas our state land, there's about, I think, three or five miles of stonework in this mountain bowl. And it goes right up the mountain. I have walked a little bit of it this spring, and it was a hike. I was just like, oh, man, this is nuts. But I found out that this land originally was owned by the Church of England, who had a missionary site at this location. They would usually set up missionary sites at already spiritual places, so it would be easier to convert the native population to the Catholic religion. And this whole area just, there's so much stonework here, and it, it's vast and just huge. I've been going to this this area for three years now. I'm still finding new stuff every time I go. Wow. And one of the first things I saw was this angled boulder right next to this low stone wall. And that's one of the things hmm. that you at, which is the United Southern and Eastern Tribes, said ceremonial stone landscapes have unique boulders in them. And that, I think that's kind of, that would be possibly a unique boulder absolutely i mean it's it's almost like an anchor for the structure in a way or yeah you know they have certain large whether it's natural or bedrock that they're kind of helping build into the landscape but i just love the flow of those structures yeah like the colonials why would they take the, that much time to make that seem so natural <laughs> we'll give them credit for right now but probably not by the end of the then, day. Then, um, you get dolmen. Yeah. Uh, then, prop boulders is another thing that I don't find too many of those around here. Yeah. This could be one. This is in the same area. As you can see, it's definitely situated on the stones. Mm -hmm. but, and I think it was purposely placed there because it's huge for one. And on the stone walls, there's similar size boulders on top of the wall. Right, Jeez. Which, yeah, that that's a probably I don't know. That's a lot of weight right there. Yeah. How I don't big know do why you think that is? Like four foot long rock, five foot, uh, about five feet. That's big. And about five feet, two feet tall, about, two feet wide. Yeah, so I would say it's fifteen hundred pounds. I mean, they're, probably. They're just showing off with that one because maybe more. Yeah. I mean, look at all those tiny little rocks. In between the nice flat stones, there's three of those stones here on the left that are kind of perfectly right there. stacked. Let yeah. me just let me just say this. 
Not that I'm a stone mason. And by the way, just so everybody, anybody that's listening to the show, yeah. if you guys really want to check out these images we're talking about, yeah. they're a little tough to describe. We'll do our best, but head over to the YouTube channel if you're listening. Um, back it up a little bit. Yeah. You're going to want to see these images. Yeah. I was just going to say, not that I'm a stone yeah. mason or like, but just in an, on an amateur level, I had these fairly decent boulder sized rocks in my backyard. I wanted them in my front yard. I'm rolling them down the sidewalk in between the two houses. I live in the city. I'm rolling them down the sidewalk in between my house and the house next to us. And my wife, it's rumbling the house. I'm just like trying not to get my feet to get smashed or lose a toe, you know, and I'm rolling this boulder and mm -hmm. she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, that took every bit of effort and energy to like just end over end, like a nice smooth. This, I, I don't think where this stone wall with this big boulder, this five foot long, two foot tall, you know, I, don't, I bet it's not on a good space to move around, right? Like if there's a couple people moving this, like it's not easy either, right? Like it's going to take a... a fair bit of energy to do this. And again, how tall is the wall? Probably not tall enough to keep the sheep in. No, it's not. And this is kind of a odd behind, behind me is a, um, an embankment mm -hmm. and on, on the opposite side of that embankment is another stone, stone wall. So it, okay. two stone walls kind of outlined this, like this little like gully. Okay. That's cool. And this is all in the area that the church moved into. And this is another one in that same area. This is a big kind of, there's a lot of this in this area, kind of the square shape boulders within mm -hmm. the stone walls. And that one's, and that one I think is roughly, uh, I forget the size. I think this one's closer to eight feet long, mm. six to eight feet. Wow. It looks worked. Yeah. That's a lot of it around in this one little area. I don't have any other examples, but a lot of it has square corners with no quarry marks. Mm. You see a lot of that too. You see square stones. I got some more examples of that um, in a little bit, and you don't see any quarry marks whatsoever. Hmm. What does that tell you? Is there any ge geology wise? I mean, how they're cutting them? Has there been any theories on what kind of tools they might be using? Um, not, not that I've heard yet. No. Hmm. My my guess they were they were very good at napping tools, so probably just upscaling that. Right. Mm -hmm. Ooh, look at that. Um, that looks like a straight line. <laughs> yeah, this is right next to an old road that's in between two mountains. And I was driving, I saw that straight line cut, and this rock is pointing. Um, mm. I was like, this is kind of weird. So I got out, took a look. And it's pointing at this large boulder that's coming out of the ground. And Doug Harris, who is the Narragans was the um, tribal historical director of the Narragans. Oh, I can't say it. Sorry, <laughs> um, of a tribe in Rhode Island. And he mentioned whale effigies, and I think this could be one. It's hard to say, but it's yeah. just I find it odd that this giant boulder with a looks like a cut line is pointing towards this one right that has a stone a short stone wall right behind it well i see that wall wow i mean it does kind of look like a humpback breaching yeah, i was about to say i can yeah. see it sure 100 mm percent. -hmm. Yeah. i watch a lot of whale documentaries with my kids <laughs> i know uh, kids love them a little bit too much maybe about about whales well and if you're a native american <laughs> or you know back in the day seeing a whale breach out of the water i'm sure that would have been a impactful maybe you would have gone through the effort to make something like that as just a historical marker, right? Mm -hmm. Like that makes more sense to me again than colonials doing it. Yeah. Um, so this is a different area. This is on what I found out there's right now, this is on the road called route 103, which follows the colonial road road. Well, it wasn't really, yeah, it was colonial uh, known as the crown point road. The Crown Point Road followed the Old Indian Road, which is a natural corridor between the Connecticut River Valley and the Champlain Valley, and it cuts right through the Green Mountains. And not far from this site is a Paleo-American site that was dated between 12,200 years ago and 11,800 years ago. And right up the road from that, they found a mammoth that Dartmouth just 
dated to 12,800 years ago. Wow. And it's all within this natural corridor. Mm. And that's where I find a lot of stonework is within the old Indian road. Whoa. But this, this stonework goes into this bedrock right here and it continues up here. Mm. It just kind of runs up there. Oh yeah. Look at that. Hang on one second. And it comes up, and it, you can see it right here. It's built right onto this bedrock. Wow. And right here, it's not on bedrock. And it's collapsed, and then it goes up the mountain and just ends at more bedrock right next to a little waterfall. Again, the connection to the underworld, to our world. And then on, it's kind of an odd spot, too. It's kind of like a dome mountain. What this is on, this is at the base of it. On top of that, I walked up and on top of the dome mountain it's just all bedrock like 360 degrees all bedrock and i kind of scrambled up it and got on top and found this stone circle mm. as you can see it's just all bedrock up here and this could be a fng reposition it could be a serpent or a turtle i can't really tell my guess is maybe a turtle because i'll show you in a second oh boy um it has a tail back here but this is gives you an idea of the landscape. It's way on the high point. This is, right. is the dome top, and it's the highest thing in this little section of the land. And right here, that's why I think it could be a turtle with that little tail right there. We're just going to say, gonna say it's but, a turtle. We love the tur the we love I Turtle like Island. Turtle Island is one of the most fun things yeah. that we love talking about on this show. We've talked about it at nauseum. There's connections to Serpent Mound. We talked about it with Mike. Um, you know, the, yeah, I like turtles. The Manitoba civilization is this lost ancient part of Atlantis that was, you know, Ohio, and parts of the U.S. are part of this Turtle Island mythology. That I don't think it's mythology. Mm -hmm. I, don't I think know this about is it. this is evident. This kind of stuff is evidence. Yeah, I got some more examples of turtle effigies in a uh, uh, site in New Hampshire. And Arisa Balu. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of turtle connections. Yep. Yeah. A lot of turtles. <laughs> but yeah, this is it's just a unique feature. But when I share this, everyone's like, it's just a fire pit. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you don't understand what it took to get to this thing. It's like, yeah. this thing, I had to scramble to get up to this thing. Man. And it also has a quartz right here that you see right here. This is the winter solstice sunrise. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, sunset. And that quartz is lined right up to it. So he gets nailed. Yeah. Wow. Supercharged. Yeah. And Something. that's the only quartz on this whole feature is right there. That's interesting. Hmm. It's like they're so, whoever they are. Look at that. They are so, so surgically precise with where they're putting these chunks of quartz. It's not mm -hmm. like they're taught, you know, it's not like every stone or piece in there is quartz. You yeah. could do that and think, man, more is more. Yeah. Maybe you don't need that much. Maybe that quartz getting hit in that way at that time charges. The, I'm just theorizing here, but, you know, what's the significance? Was it just shiny, you know, or, or did it actually do something at a higher level? Some kind of technology. It had a lot of meaning. Yeah, okay. meaning. Yeah. I, I apologize. I forget what, what it is because I recently just heard about it and kind of slipped my mind. I got refresh myself on that one yeah no yeah, no problem no problem great stuff this is again this is the area where the church of england set up and this is a good representation of they some of the stonework within the stonework itself you have shapes mm -hmm. like that right there and this is bedrock and it just flows right down it's really weird next yes, to this it does yeah and it, this goes straight up a very steep incline. And that, I hiked it in the spring. I was beat by the time I got to the top of it. And then the stonework just takes a drastic curve and just continues for I don't know how long it goes. I just, I turned around and headed back because I was kind of beat from hiking up the incline. It was pretty much, uh, again, a ski reference. It would be a double black diamond how steep it was oh my wow so when they turn like that this, what what do you think's going on there josh when all of a sudden uh, boom, they just 
connection maybe is going to another area that's sacred or it could be breaking up the land for fire breaks hard to say yeah and this is another this is the same wall this wall comes down to a v that section i just showed was over on the left hand side this is the right hand side and you have a natural spring right here right at the base of the stone wall then this right here goes into the spring and that kind of kind of looks like a serpent to me whoa and you and you see this like over here giant bedrock and, and within it you see bedrock right here and that's a giant cliff and this is about the same size as this right here right there and it's just this whole area it just screams bedrock and stonework not prime wow. farmland whatsoever let me ask you something josh if we were to come and hang out with you where would you bring us to this area where would you bring us oh yeah this would be a uh, spot to this area yeah I've been trying to get um, the director of Nier for Vermont down here for a few years, but every time we try to connect, it just doesn't work out. And she really wants to see this area because I've been sharing stuff with her, and she's like, "I we have to see this." I'm like, "Yeah, you do." Wow, this is That's blowing cool. my mind. I would love to collaborate in That's some way with Mysterious Mountains and <laughs> Nira, and this is we got to see these for ourselves. I, I've been thinking it as you we're know, looking at it because I, I find it tough to get hard. the full scope of it because it, we're looking at photos. The photos are amazing, by the way. Not trying to knock them by any yes, means. I love that you're actually researching like, and detailing and documenting and it's not just, hey, like, this is what I found. Like Being in the presence of... Right. You get a much... Well, for sense. scope and scale and, and everything, just mm -hmm. it, it's tough to even understand like the elevational change or pitch of the ground. Like when you just said it'd be at the same, you know, vertical as like a double black diamond. That gave me an instant like I know yep. what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. right? like, yeah. But otherwise we can look at some of these photos and images and not really understand like how steep it is we're looking at it or, or, or some of the geometry and um, alignments. But mm -hmm. again, I think it's great what you're yes. doing with it. Yeah, that's the thing like photos and video don't they don't illustrate steepness at all it just kind yeah. of flattens it a little bit so it's it is difficult to just like show that in any way besides being there yeah and um this is a different area uh this area i i kind of like stumbled upon this one i was looking for something else and i found some stream and I started following the stream that I started seeing stonework going in and out of the stream. You can see it right here. And this is heavily buried. And this is another thing I noticed around here. The top stones are heavily decayed. You can see right here, just super weathered. Looks like it's been there out, just taking the elements for a long, long time. But then you look down below, it's very solid. It looks like how a stone should look. Mm -hmm. If you can see that. Yep. Can I ask you a question? Does sure. it make you wonder? <laughs> this is going to get even crazier. Like, think of it like melting ice, like the stone on top has been worn and weathered. Do you think there were these walls were taller? There were stones that have just absolutely like broken or weathered or reduced to nothing? Like, has that wall eroded over time? Um, if anything, it's been getting buried. Uh, okay. The book Manitou, uh, they went to the site called Collar One. And they excavated three feet of soil, and oh, they wow. were finding stuff down three feet down. Wow! So my right. guess, some of these walls are probably taller, but there you have to dig it. And I don't yeah. dig anything up. I just sure sure meant why see sure yep. gotcha gotcha. Is there anything in yeah. the lidar maps that you can see where there's some disturbance where they're not necessarily poking out of the ground, but there might be something where maybe there's some stone walls and then they kind of just disappear, but you can see them on LiDAR? Uh, yeah. Um, there's a, coming up, I got a good example of that. And, oh. Well, a good story about that too. Sweet. This is the same area. As you can see, it just, the landscape just filled with boulders. Weird. And then it connects to be, kind of triangle shaped bedrock. Right. And it, it doesn't fight the landscape. And then this one, a lot of stonework too kind of has this motion it goes up and down kind of like a serpent moving across the landscape mm -hmm. yeah you can see that right here this is going down to a low point and it goes back up a little bit later i used to think these were collapsed or like removed but after a while you see it all the time 
it's just like, no, this is serpent work. Man. That's another thing. Like a lot of people just look at like one wall and they're like, this is colonial. It's like, well, if you look at the grand scheme of things and how it all looks similar, it's all built in the same way, same locations. It doesn't, it fits more of a cultural aspect mm-hmm. than a, a labor pr- practice. It's a style of engineering, architecture, art. It's not something that random people in New Hampshire and Vermont and Massachusetts that are all of a sudden piling up stones out of their fields in the exact same way as people that they probably don't have any connection with. I mean, this is a broad culture. If all these structures mm-hmm. look similar like this all over New England, it's a, it's a yeah. culture, dude. And it's all up and down. Um, the Appalachian Mountains, really. Um, Nira had a presentation. I forget the guy's name, but he what he called it like the Grand Tour, and he went from up here all the way down to the end of the Appalachian Mountains, and there's just similar stonework. In yeah. Alabama, there's actually a serpent on top of a mountain on, on top of Skeleton Mountain that the University of uh, Jackson, Florida, the archaeology professor went out, looked at it, and talked to the tribe down there. And they came to the conclusion it's a giant serpent effigy going across the ridge of the mountain, similar to what I find up here. Yeah, absolutely. Appalachian all- Intelligence is another podcast that we uh, had on our show and have been uh, got to hang out with. But they yeah. recently have been talking about stone serpents that they had come across in the Appalachian. They're in um, exactly same situation. So these these stone serpents are really popping up so all of a sudden the serpents like rising up but there's serpents all over the u.s yeah. and canada it's and all over the world effigies serpent mounds i mean yeah the serpent is i think just hit that awareness factor for the larger audience finally maybe right like oh maybe there was one yeah. no there wasn't one and, there were many well and that's the story of you know the the irish you know saint patrick removing all the serpents from Ireland that was the serpent cults that was the serpent religion that was the metaphor there were never any snakes mm-hmm. it was just a metaphor for the catholic church coming in and rooting out all the druidic serpent cults essentially i mean that's what the story is they weren't actually pushing the serpent serpents out so it goes back to this world civilization. You know, VJ talks about their connection with the serpent, mm. which is all about Kundalini yoga and this uh, Hindu connection that we found. Uh, a friend of ours that's come on the show a few times came to the United States, lived here for three years, started traveling to ancient sites, which he didn't even know there were ancient sites in America. This totally blew mm. his mind. And he went to Serpent Mountain and, and he really believes that it's – basically a temple to Shiva and it's a representation Mm. of the seven chakras and Kundalini yoga. And so he found dialect similarities with Tamil, which is his language is the oldest language in the world and native American languages, uh, the tower of Babel story Mm -hmm. and all these different things through petroglyphs and, so it's much bigger than even just New England and Ohio. Yeah. I mean, this is it's, worldwide. It's everywhere. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's pretty impressive when you think about, like, how there's so much similarity all throughout the ancient world. Mm-hmm. Oh, I agree. It's yeah. a dispersion uh, of ideas, not, you know, people weren't cut off by oceans. They were talking to each other, traveling and sharing ideas all over. I think yeah. they either had to have been or they were there. having the same ideas at the same time. Like, we'll make a pyramid here. You make one in Egypt too. We're going to do this here. You do that there too. <laughs> like, they had to have either talked to each other or seen it or known about it. Or again, are we just all spontaneously we're having the same? Like, that's a little too random of a coincidence for me that I think there had to be some cross communication or like idea sharing. Version. Well, we they're starting to accept the kelp highway theory that people sailed over and actually one, like one of the paleo American sites on Lake, um, the Champlain sea has Ramaha, uh, church, which is from Northern Labrador. And at the time, the only way to get that was to sail there. So 
it's 12,200 years old and they were sailing at that time to go to this quarry to collect this material. Right. Wow. So right. people, people were sailing. Wow. That's incredible. I'd never yeah. heard that. That's new to me. Well, that's what Arisa Amazing. talks about with the turtles and yep. following the turtles in their, um, you know, I think of it like finding Nemo getting in those currents, right? Yep. Like they literally yep. found out like, Hey, if we watch this animal, like we can follow the same highway that they're taking. And that's how we, because again, we were like, oh, the ancients, they were too stupid to be able to figure this out or figure that out. Like we took a lot of credit away from them for so many years that we're starting to slowly realize how much we've got to give it back. And then we got to go, man, are we really that much smarter than we think we are? Like maybe they were still way ahead of us. Like I yeah. think that's what scares us more than anything is we don't want to go. We think we've gotten further ahead and we're really going, we've, we haven't gotten right. anywhere. And when VJ came here and met Native Americans, he felt like they were his his brothers mm -hmm. and sisters. He's just like it was just uh, like meeting family. That's awesome. Did you guys see um the island in the Mediterranean that they found out Homo erectus was sailing to? Yes, five hundred thousand years ago. Yes. Yep. Yep, you remember we covered that yeah, in Strange we, Happenings totally and they were did. talking about how, you know, it wasn't a tidal thing because the water would have never gone down low enough that, you know, they could have made it by. So, yeah, they had to finally admit, you know, grudging, begrudgingly that, oh, yeah, well, this group that we didn't think would have any ability to do this, they could do it. Yeah, we're we're going to have to yeah. redraw the lines a lot. The yeah. walls are coming down, and man. Today they found, um, in Africa, they found that uh, woodworking. Yep. That, yep. I think that dated to 470,000 years ago. Yep. Structural. So, like they made a structure yeah. out of wood. Mm -hmm. Almost a half a million years old. Wow. Yeah, I just saw that today. I dropped that link in our Mattermost. We'll be covering that. One of our headlines because I was like that. I'm a bit, I, I don't know if you're familiar with Michael Cremo. I always do this with people that, you know, are kind of in that knowledge filtration spectrum because you're talking about, you know, they had all these sites so they didn't fit the narratives. So they threw them out, you know. That's what Michael Cremo mm -hmm. talks about a bunch is the whole knowledge filtration of it. And I think we're seeing it just cracking. You know, you're going to have people that are going to find these things that they cannot keep quiet anymore. You're going to have more people out there researching that are going to find things that they can't debunk anymore. It's going to get too much credibility that they won't be able to push back against it anymore. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think they're trying to do a lot of gatekeeping. Like, well, if you're not a professor or you didn't go and get a PhD in this, you can have no opinion on it. It's like, well, no, I can find it and I can get it to the right people that then could give me their, uh, uh, their investigation on it. But even like in your end, you can't get it in front of the archaeologist to even have them look at it. Cause they're like, nope, it doesn't fit our model. Like it, it's going to have to give at some point. They're on the wrong side of history. Yeah, it's, I, I don't understand why. I, but, I think it's right. just a giant. Yeah. I think it's a giant narrative control. Yeah, but yeah. So there we go. This this story starts right here, and it has an odd. You can see right here. This kind of like a field stone has kind of a circle shape, but it's divided with this flat stone. It starts right there. And I think this is maybe one method to date the stonework similar to the way Mike was doing it. Um, but this one, you can see right here, is heavily buried. And that's that's it again. It's the same height. Like, that's the height. And right here, I'm guessing it's about mm -hmm. the same height, but it's completely buried. My son for scale. Um, mm -hmm. Then it ends right here. Again, you kind of have that mm -hmm. uh, shape you got these shapes within the stone wall and to the left of this is an, a natural spring. So the stone wall just starts at once at that kind of overlook and ends next to a spring. What's interesting about the location of this, this is a map of Glacial Lake Hitchcock that was here 15,000 years ago. I don't know when it really went away. I see 12,800 years ago, 13,500 years ago. It kind of, um, it's hard to say. Right, but um, recently, well, I've always heard this story from um, or an oral history story about the lake. Um, it goes, the people were getting mad at the giant beaver that was creating this water because it was eating the resources of the land because the lake kept expanding. As well, it 
kept killing all the fish. It's a glacial lake, meaning that there's no fish in it. And as it expanded, it took over waterways that probably did have fish in it. So they were looking at it as it was devouring the, uh, the fish and killing up all the resources. So they asked Hobomok to deal with the beaver. And Hobomok accidentally killed the beaver and by breaking its neck. And the dam, which is in Rocky Hill, Connecticut, there's a giant glacial dam of mud and ice and rock that collapsed and the lake drained and people got the land back which means one thing that there were people here when the lake formed because they there's an oral history talking about it was taking the land from them so there was people here fifteen thousand years ago and they were talking about as like a beaver pond as it took over the land and they were watching this happen, but at a huge scale. And that's where you find all the stonework. And that's why I'm kind of, this is kind of recent, I'm still kind of processing this one, but Hobomok, I found some places has been represented as FNG says, turtles and serpents. And all along the shoreline, there's serpents everywhere pointing towards where the water used to be. So it could be that these were prayers and stone asking Hobomok to get rid of the water. Wow. That's just one idea. And it's all but, during the younger driest period and the, the impact period where if you have water, I mean, it's coming down from if something hit these glaciers, like what Randall Carlson and those guys talk about, and you've got a bunch of water that's coming down, that's right in the same time, time frame. And this lake is expanding and expanding and expanding. It's taking over everything. Yeah. Very interesting. Put you underwater. It's the flood. But yeah, it, and then that's the mammoth was dated to 12,800 years ago. And there's a beluga whale that was found in Charlotte, uh, Vermont. And that was dated to 12,800 years ago, too. Bro. A beluga whale? Yeah, because of the Champlain Sea. What? Oh, that's no. What that, Mike was telling the, the Champlain Sea. That's so crazy to me. He's following all those surfaces. So it was, bra- it was salt water. Mm hmm. Yeah. This was an inland sea area. That is so crazy. I'm sorry. The, yeah, you're right. End of the, that's right. Yeah. I'm with you now. I'm sorry. It took me a moment. That is so incredible. God, that's cool. Well, yeah, they're high water markers. They're pointing at the water like, hey, help us out. And this, um, I had better maps from the state geologists in New Hampshire and Vermont. And I just, that's how I started finding stuff. I was using glacial water maps to find the shoreline and right. I would just go to the shoreline and that's where I was finding all the stonework. So yep. that kind of made it quicker to find stuff. I would look on the map and go on the ladder map and just be like, okay, it's right there. Yep. And Jeez. this, this, this map right here is kind of rough. It's not precise. It just kind of gives a basic idea, but this is an overlay of that wall that we just looked at right here. Oh, wow. It's right at that shoreline. You can see the shoreline pretty distinct here. You can see that cut line. Oh, yeah. That's the, that's, the, that's the shoreline of the lake. And as you can see, all the stonework pointing towards it right here. And all that is on this pretty rough terrain. Uh, it was a sheep farm way back. But as you can see, this doesn't enclose anything. It does up here. Not really. But a few spots it does. Which I wouldn't put past colonial people to create pins because they you can tell they reuse stuff, especially in cell holes. I've been a few cell holes, um, a few homes that are still standing from like 1700s, 1800s. I'm in the basement. I'm looking at the stones. I'm like, this is stuff they took from the walls. You can kind of tell. Yeah. But yeah, but it, that's how everything just lines up to that ancient shoreline. That's so cool, dude. I find this just and this fascinating. Is, this is the uh, New Hampshire Stonewall Mapper. And that's, like I said, everyone just marks where, when they go. It's public access. Could people just hop on and just take a look and start marking stuff. Um, would you be able to send some links, Josh? We'd love to put some of this stuff in the description uh, when this is released. That'd be awesome to be able to have that as sure. a source. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. This is freaking fascinating. And this is um, this is this wall right here, and it's mostly quartz. Oh, wow. but I didn't walk up this one because it, it just got a little thick for me. I was like, yeah, I can just take this photo. 
Yeah. Wow. But that's another thing around the lake shoreline, high amount of quartz within the stonework. And further inland you go, we don't see this much quartz. Mm hmm. And this, um, you're saying you see stuff on LIDAR map, but you can't see it in person. Right. This is a big mountain bowl. This right here is at 1,400 feet. This is um, 1,800 feet. Okay. Uh, I got the deed record for this area. The only history I could find was it was used for timber. Um, it was never farmland. As you can see right here, there's a stream. It's a springhead right here. And you got this little square right here. But my first time going to this, there's a road over here. Uh, then from that road, I found on the lighter. I didn't, I didn't put it in the presentation because I didn't think of what we'd be talking about. But you can see trail networks going up this mountainside, and it's steep. It's very steep. And um, so I got, I parked one day on the side of the road and tried to find the trail network. I could not find it. I could find like a little section here and there, but it was mostly gone. But on the lighter map, it's very visible. Hmm. And I we I tried we tried to find it once we hiked the whole thing and it was just buried but you can see on the lidar map perfectly it's kind of weird wow that yeah but this is what uh this is what that square shape is that's my friend right there he's standing on like one end of it i'm standing on the other end you can see stonework here it comes to this corner right here and then this is a kind of a, a flat area. Then it dips down. Hang on one second. Then it dips down for that's that corner. Comes over here, right here. Then it dips down into like this little gully. And then there's a separate one right next to it. I'm not sure what this is. Um, right here, we kind of remove some leaves. It looks like a big lentil stone, so it might be a doorway. And the way I'm facing right now is towards the winter solstice sunrise. And this is the height of the stonework from the ground up. Hmm. It's over 20 feet tall. Wow. Whoa. That is so cool. And right behind this, outlining the bowl of the mountain, is this stone wall that curves right here. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. and, it end, and it ends at this giant snake-like head. Mm. as you see it's low doesn't enclose anything right because it just comes to an end in the middle of the bowl and that could be an eye i don't know <laughs> yeah the serpent cool. heads yeah i mean it's tough to say but look how much you can kind of see how much is under the ground right it's just poking yeah. up so much i mean that's what i'd love to get a sense of in person is just and just the vibe that you, when you get into these places, it probably, for me, I, whenever I get in an ancient place, whether it's the water serpent below Serpent Mound, which there's been artifacts found down there. It's been a ceremonial mm -hmm. space down there where they've done water ceremonies. And, and it's really just a rock face that fell from the side of the cliff that's laying in the water, but it looks like a giant dragon head. And it would make sense that that was ceremonial. And, Turns out they found a bunch of stuff down there. Yeah. And, um, you know, that's one of kind of the secret spots of the underneath Serpent Mountain. Yeah. Down below the by the Brush Creek. But, man. Yeah, that's one, one, one spot I got to check out. Oh, for sure. For sure. Uh, but this is still that same possible Serpent Wall. Again, with that triangle shape. Yep. Within the stone wall itself. And this is hmm. some good examples of quarry looking stone with no quarry marks. I don't even know what kind of stone this one is right here because I've never seen this one in the area. It's so it's sedimentary, but I this area doesn't really have much of that. It's mostly granite and volcano like because Melisketney, which is a was, sacred mountain to the uh, Native Americans that used to be an ancient volcano and all of the stonework in the area points to towards that too. So you find odd kind of stones like this in areas 
I'm not sure what that is. That's just weird. And more examples of just like perfect little cubes with you can wow. see there's no quarry marks. Right. Wow. See, I've not seen walls like that. I think it's amazing to see that in like precise of a block. And then you look at the actual shape of the wall and some of the other blocks. And you're like, what? None of it's done like with any kind of consistency. But like there's some engineering in, in, in the design and aesthetic. It's so wild. <laughs> yeah, I, this one, I never, I have not come across anything else like this shape right here. This is the only one I know of that's like this. Yeah. I mean, that looks like a crude Puma Punku or something you find in South America. Yeah, that's cool. Um, This is the area that I uh, looked into the deed record. The first one I looked at, this is a power line, which makes it, you know, easy to go up and down. And on the deed record, it was sold in 1896 to the state of Vermont so they could develop this power line. Then it was sold again in 1950 or 1960. Then again, 2009, when a hunting camp was uh, put on it. But on top of this bedrock right here, is this stone circle built on the bedrock itself that has like a little seat right here. Or some, I don't know what that is, but it, I think it's part of the work. And this is the view from that kind of seat. You have a standing stone, which could be a Manitou stone, a sacred stone that points to the winter solstice sunrise over this mountain right here. And there's some quartz right there. I haven't been up there yet to see how that interacts during the sunrise. But that's something. And you see the power line here, then right down here is that Black River Valley, the old Indian road. It all ties together. I mean, I would love to just take that trail and connect all those dots. Yeah. Uh, how are we doing on time? Am I? Yeah, yeah. We, we've got a little bit of time. Yeah, we've, got, we've probably got okay. time for a couple more photos. So, yeah, but by all means, uh, make sure we have the entire picture. Yeah, this is in New Hampshire. Um, I was driving one day, and I noticed a big sand dune right next to the road um, and usually we find sand dunes means that there was some kind of glacial water activity in the area could have been a lake could flood something but usually when i find that is possibly a shoreline of some kind of ancient water so i'm like i got so i went home started looking at a lidar map and i found this potential area and i drove up from the like this old old dirt road that's pretty rough i looked over and saw this giant stone mound hmm. and this one right next to it that one right there this one i'm not sure i've heard um the backside that's all collapsed which i was watching a near presentation they said that could be a representation of an egg hatch uh and hatched egg and it just they kind of made an effigy of a broken egg hmm. but this is the other one right next to it oh, it's just yeah. it's it's perfect, like pretty much a perfect circle. Wow. And in front of it, it's connected to this giant pointed boulder. And I think this could be a turtle F FNG. That looks like a turtle. Yeah. And then right next, right across the street from this one is this one that's a little bit smaller. And this one points towards a like a big pond, natural spring pond that flows down the mountain into a bigger lake. And this point right here is pointing towards the winter solstice sunrise again. And again, you can see kind of turtle shape has oh, little yeah. feet and has a tail in the back. So that is turtle up and cheese everywhere in this one little area. Oh, we got to send this, this area. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, this one I've been going here off and on because it's about an hour away from me but it's on the way to go visit family and stuff like that so when i go visit i kind of hop up this mountain walk around a little bit um there's i lost count there's probably 12 or more then there's for, more further up the mountain it's just so much stonework and it's one little area and it, it just baffles me how much stonework it is here because I'll, I'll show you wow this is that same turtle fmg this is further up, and they're just, they're huge. This is probably 
six, seven feet tall, 20 feet long. And I didn't think I was going to find, I saw stuff on the lighter map. I wasn't sure what I was going to find. So I didn't bring anything with me for a scale. So I'm using my hat. <laughs> and there's another one Dang. heavily buried, but you can see how well the stonework is built around here on the sides. It's all the way around. It's as you see, like the other ones, it's perfectly built all the way around. Wow, dude. This That's is crazy. So cool. And wow. And this is this one's further up. This is probably eight feet tall, six feet, um, seven. I don't know. It's it's taller than me. I'm six feet tall and it's taller than me. And you can see it goes up on bedrock right mm -hmm. here. And just comes down to this corner. Mm. It goes down to this corner down here, right there. And this is looking on the opposite side of that. Again, you kind of have these square corners within the stonework itself. And this is looking down on it. And it connects way down here on the bedrock and right here on the bedrock. And it's just filled with smaller stones within the middle. It's impressive um, work, man. What, I mean, that looks like someone designed that to me and again you kind of see this right here it could be a turtle with the open mouth mm -hmm. that's just a guess then about 20 yards from this one is this one Jeez, this is dude. i don't know what this is <laughs> i haven't seen anything quite like this yet again it has perfect perfectly built wall in front of it uh it went quite a ways to the right, right over here to the left, it comes to a corner again, but it goes up all the way up here. I'm not sure how tall it is, but it's it's a lot of work. Yeah, that's no joke. Wow. And again, this is all in one little area. If this is colonial people, um, they had they weren't doing anything else. <laughs> it's like either this is thousands of years of work from from the Abenaki or colonial people didn't have a life but it's agreed that some person or people put these rocks it's not naturally the, occurring you're right i mean th there's people th th it's it's agreed upon that people did these piles and well, mounds and walls correct uh sometimes um yeah there's um dr curtis hoffman he's a retired professor of archaeology he was talking in a speech that he was speaking to someone, I forget what state, and he, they're finding features just like these, perfectly built stone mounds, stone cairns. Uh, and he said, he's like, yeah, just, they fell down and organized them this, this way from the hillside. It's like, what? Someone told him that, and they were being completely honest. I mean, right there. You or not honest, sincere. Yeah. Three stones just on that bottom wall. Boom, boom, boom. They're all right in a row. Boom, boom, boom. They're all... There's yeah. three columns of stones that are perfectly diagonal in line with each other. Yeah. yeah I don't have an explanation. For it's it. interesting. Yeah. This is fascinating yeah. stuff, Josh. I'm, my mind is really, I just can't believe the volume. And it's a lot I mean, of stones. what he just showed us. Yeah. That's five a, stone mounds. It's a lot of stones. That's not even that, like that's so one one hundredth of it. Wild, man. <laughs> it's everywhere. Right. In this one little spot, it's just. And I looked on uh, New Hampshire has a a map of the old Indian pathways through the state, and we're like right now it's all snowmobile trails. Which I kind of one idea is a lot of the snowmobile trails in both states are old Indian roads sure. or paths, and they've just been repurposed for ATV because they're just so well made. Yeah, and this area it's a snowmobile trail network and all around it is this stuff Damn. that's so crazy well and the, we really need to collab on something yeah i, I don't yeah. know this is this is just this is blowing my mind um you know mysterious mountains guys on youtube you really got to check out josh's videos too because it does add another depth these photos are amazing right uh, but i have watched gone through quite a few of josh's videos and they're fantastic um but josh if you want to kind of just let us know a little bit about how we can find you and so if people want to dig in more they can hop on your youtube channel let us know where uh we can find more about this 
Um, I'm on YouTube, Mysterious Mountains, Instagram, Mysterious Mountains, and TikTok too. Um, but yeah, those are the three main places I post everything. I'm more active on Instagram and TikTok than YouTube because YouTube I kind of save for bigger videos, longer videos. But uh, yeah, I'm, those are my three places pretty much. Follow Josh, guys. He's crushing it. He's making some really awesome digestible short form videos that really kind of hit it, bring the information. They're entertaining. We love what you're doing, man. Absolutely. And, and you know, you. look at that. I mean, this is just, I mean, I wish we had like, let's, let's go through this one real quick <laughs> because right. this might be the most interesting one we've seen yet. Uh, yeah, this is right next to that old, like possible <laughs> old Native American trail, um, snowmobile trail. I'm not sure what this is. This is more of a wall. It's more of a strip, but it's perfectly made like this. The whole thing is just perfect. And it wraps around this giant boulder among the landscape. And they just, they found it and built around it. But as you can see, it doesn't enclose anything. None of this stuff enclosed anything. Mm -hmm. And one ex well, one thing people say about these stone mounds, they're like, they're property markers. I'm like, well, the in this one area, the property was like two feet because it goes stone mound, stone mound, stone mound, stone mound. So it doesn't yeah. make any sense for property. Right. Right. Or driving a stake into the ground works too. How about just like <laughs> one, one or two stones instead of one or 2,000 stones? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's an unbelievable. Uh, whoa. Wow. Yeah. Um, I got a lot of photos. Sorry. This is just like, like, I was just collecting photos. I'm like, yeah, I got a few. Then I realized I have like over 80. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it though, man. This is like each one's more awesome than the next. Um, same area. This is another old road that's no longer really used. Um, I was driving. I saw this giant boulder. I'm like, all right, what's this? So I hopped out and went behind it. You can see some stonework right here. It's hard to see. It's heavily buried, mm -hmm. but this stonework goes from there, from, from that bolt, from the back of that boulder, down the landscape, and ends in this uh, like beaver pond or like natural spring pond. What? And you can see this is this is the wall, and it goes right into the water. Mm -hmm. That's it. It's just probably hundred feet, and it's very low, heavily buried, and this is like a very swampy area. This is not farmland. And I got some few more photos to show like what the landscape is in this area. This is why I would call like camp land. This is not land that would be used. This is a nice land to go visit. Like you go up, go swim in the lakes and the pond, stuff like that. But you wouldn't work this land because it's too rocky, acidic. It's not good land for farming or anything really besides enjoying it. Mm -hmm. But this is the stonework in it, as you see, as these gaps. Triangle shape once again. This is that road, that old road that's no longer in use. You got a natural spring right here, low stone wall right next to it. And it continues down into pretty much a boulder field. And it just keeps going. Jeez. But as you see, this isn't good farmland. And a lot of people, mm -hmm. some people say is property dividers too, which my kind of idea thought could be possible that just like the pilgrims took over abandoned villages, people came up here, found all this stonework because they thought it was a gift from God that there was such a whittled landscape that there was no one here that when sellers came in, they could just take it over. So they didn't really pay attention to what was over here. They thought it was a gift from God. They worked it to kind of fix it up. But they were using pre-existing stonework and repurposing it for property dividers, fields, or sheep pens. Sure. Absolutely. And that's it. And this is just an interactive uh, map with Glacial Lake Hitchcock right here, the Champlain Sea over here. Uh, Winooski Lake right here. But yeah, this is kind of what I use to help identify locations. 
But yeah, that's it. <laughs> wow, Josh, amazing stuff. Great Thank stuff. you. Thank you for your work and you know, the passion comes through. The YouTube channel rocks. I love what you're doing with all the short form stuff on Instagram, TikTok. I mean, keep it up. We love what you're doing. I would love to collaborate in some way. I mean, we should get together and uh, maybe we come to New England, you come to Ohio, we can talk serpents 24-7. We have some people here in Ohio we'd yeah. love for you to meet, um, which I think Mike's met Jeff. Um, Dennis, I yeah. know, has met Jeff, um, but our Serpent Mound guy here. But I would love for you to to meet some of these people and kind of Connect. start connecting the yeah. dots all in expanding to uh, the rest of the U.S. So, uh, again, guys, Mysterious Mountains on YouTube, Mysterious oh, Mountains mysterious. on Instagram and TikTok. We had a ball, Josh. Thank you so very much for joining us. Um, I, I really, my mind's just completely blown. So yeah. <laughs> I, I'm going to digest this. I'm, I really want to get on some of these LiDAR maps and just oh, go yeah. around too. Yeah, that's really um, cool. Really, really great stuff. Josh, is there any final words you want to leave our audience with? Uh, please, this stage is yours. Um, well, thanks for having me on, for one. Uh, for another thing, um, there's lots of resources to learn about the history of North America, like pre-Columbus. Um, you just kind of have to search for it. And it's just so much history here that is not taught, like, over 10,000 years of history that not many people know about. It's ignored, but it's such a rich, vast culture, culture and history that deserves to be, to be looked at and respected and acknowledged. A hundred percent. Could agree. not agree yeah. more. Josh, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. Josh, Mysterious Mountains, everybody. Don't go anywhere, Josh. We'll be right back. We're going to wrap up the show and we'll chat with you a little bit here. And uh, pff, wow. Unbelievable. Thank you so much, dude. That Peace. Was, <laughs> I'm just blown away. I'm blown away by yeah, all of it. I'm blown time. away by the interpretations every time. And, and the ascribing it to colonial and Native Again. Americans never settled here. And like, that's where I'm like, I feel like my brain's just breaking. I'm like, how? Some of the how? structures were wild. Lots of work, the turtles, lots of effort. That really impressed yeah. me. It just the just sheer volume. Overnight. I just, wow. We got to get on the ground and see some of that stuff from our, for ourselves. And again, it doesn't make wow. sense to me to like, we went up this mountainside or this hillside to clear this for no reason. Mm -hmm. like, it just doesn't make sense. sense. So I th I like his research. I like his angle. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but the Great we stuff. talked about it earlier about how we might get some comments of people saying, oh, you guys are idiots for thinking it's any but thing but Colonial. Bring it on. It's like, hey, I'm we're sorry, to but I think out. we're just both on different ends of the spectrum and where we don't see eye to eye with the edge. We'll talk other. to you too. Sure, yeah, yeah. You want to come on? You want to debate yeah. Mike? You want to debate You won't Josh? be the first person to call me a moron, believe me. <laughs> oh, we are not that smart. I won't be the first one to admit <laughs> that. I mean, geez. What we're, I mean. I'm good at certain things. Yeah. We have our talents, but... It, it, this know. isn't my wheelhouse necessarily. I'm just trying to learn. That's why I'm having the conversation. That's why I want to hear the theories. And Pass. obviously, though, I will say I am, the a, eye test. I am a Cremo enthusiast. Mm -hmm. I, I need a shirt that says something like that, like Team Cremo. Bub brought up Cremo again on the show. It comes up all the time because <laughs> everybody talks about it. Every yeah. every different discipline or, or construct talks about a knowledge filtration, whether it's ancient archaeology, whether it's medicine, whether mm -hmm. it's finance, whether it's government, whatever you want to talk about. There's mm -hmm. a knowledge filtration where we are not allowed to know this or we're not allowed to see X or what. Yep. For whatever reason, because it's for our own benefit and our own sake, like I think I could handle knowing if it wasn't colonial people making all these fields, uh, <laughs> fences, and serpents. Like I think I could handle that. <laughs> we were so I I, I, I rail against that. I get, enough, I get frustrated. Uh, mm -hmm. I get frustrated. We can make up our own minds. I, I think I would like to. But you guys are the best. Thank you so much for being Appreciate with you. us tonight. You guys can find us Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, the Facebook groups rock. And we got some big stuff coming up, guys. We've got some conferences we're, you know, looking forward to in the future. We'll keep you guys up to date on everything that we're doing. Uh, but we are lots of things cooking. Yeah, and always thank you to Disboro and Stoner in Master Control. There, there it they is. are. There What's it is. happening, fellas? Is it it's like, going thermonuclear in there right nah. now? <laughs> it's like hopefully only <laughs> eighty-five to ninety degrees in there right now. I think I just saw a, a McCall fly through there. Yeah. 
Uh, what else did I miss? Like, subscribe on all of our platforms. Listen, right. share. Subscribe, share. Tell everybody. Yep. Thank you, guys. We appreciate Love, you. peace, and chicken grease to all. Bye -bye. Later. <laughs>